Welcome to part two of our week two in ICD-10 CM. This is our second half where we'll be talking about tables and placeholders for week uh, module five on ICD-10 um, sections 4.3 and 4.4. Okay, so neoplasm table and drugs and chemicals, what are they? Well, a neoplasm is any type of new growth. When the provider is talking about a cancer or any type of tumor, they're, they're referring to a neoplasm. And even though they may not use that terminology, it's up to you as a coder to identify the condition that they've stated and determine to go into the neoplasm table versus the regular alphabetical. Now, for today, we're gonna talk a little bit about how to select that code, but I don't want that to scare you or throw you off. So keep in mind that our purpose today is understanding the format of the ICD-10-CM and how it's used. Later on, when you get into, we'll, we'll look at a little bit of code, coding next week, but more so when you get into ICD-10-CM, then you'll be looking at the nitty gritty details. Okay, so neoplasms, how does it work? Well, first you wanna go into your alphabetical, and at the end of the alphabetical, you have your tables. The first table is the neoplasm table that would be found and it's going to be organized uh, with boxes unlike the regular alphabetical so you can see it like a table. These boxes read in anatomical order so you're going to say where is my neoplasm located and then based off of that location, any specific details. So the example we have here, which represents uh, page 76 of your textbook, has the abdomen, abdominal, with the breakdown of options for cavity, organ, viscera, and wall. You'll notice that by looking at these codes, some of them remain the same. However, others will change. And so when those codes change, that's because that specific area has a unique section. Below that, you'll notice from the neoplasm table as you're reading, uh, there are certain categories, the subcategories that are indented, and the main categories will come back to the left. So always pay attention when you're in any alphabetical table or otherwise uh, to see where is my line. This one does not have the same kind of line that the regular alphabetical does, but because of the boxes, it's pretty easy to differentiate. Now, the sections that we separate are malignant primary, malignant secondary, cancer in situ, benign, uncertain, and unspecified. This comes directly from the doctor or the pathologist if you're coding from the pathology report. If we're not certain about a cancer type, but we're indicating we don't know, not that it's been determined as uncertain, we go with unspecified. Because uncertain means that the pathologist has looked at it and cannot determine if it's malignant or not. Okay, so there is some terminology there that you wanna be aware of. Now, this is pretty easy. The neoplasm table is one of the few that you can code directly from, although it's still recommended that you look up these codes in the tabular index when you're looking up a code. So if I was looking at the neoplasm table, I would find the alphabetical definition of what I'm looking for, and I would look and align it here, for example, malignant secondary, with the term that I have. So let's take an example. Let's say I have a patient with malignancy to the abdominal wall. This is another term that you want to be familiar with, the difference between to and from. If I have a malignancy that is to something, then that malignancy, where it's going to, is the secondary. If I have a malignancy that is from somewhere, then that malignancy is the primary. And if I don't specify where it's from, I only have the two, then there's also a code for unspecified location for that primary. So if you ever have a secondary, there should always be a primary, even if we don't know where it came from. So if I have a patient with, the C with the line above it means with in shorthand for medical documentation. I have a patient PT 
with malignancy to the abdomen wall. And let's say that it's from the abdominal pelvic. Okay. In that case, I would look up each code individually. I would find first, would typically the first one that's listed, which would be the two, but you can go either way. Whatever makes it easier for you. When you look to determine which is first listed, it's going to be based off of what the primary focus of the visit was. So if I were to read it like this, most likely that secondary is what we're focusing on today. So I would start there and I would say malignancy to the wall, abdomen, wall, line it up, malignancy secondary, and look up code C79.2 to make sure that there's no additional uh, characters for that code. Just like earlier, we're gonna look at everything that leads uh, into that code. So you do wanna look at the full category of C79, and you wanna make sure that you look at each breakdown for the dot two, always reading up and down. We're not gonna go into that today uh, on the second half of the video because it's something you will learn as you continue to code. But if I go to C79.2, I'll find that on page 482 of the ICD-10-CM Expert Edition 2019 uh, code book from the AAPC. If you have a copy, this is the recommended copy for this course, but not required. C79.2 reads to me for a secondary malignant neoplasm of the skin, which the abdomen wall is. Then, once I have that code, I would write it down and come back to my term and say, where is it from? Do we know? In this case, we do. And I would look up abdominal pelvic in my neoplasm table. I would align it to say this is malignant because there is a secondary. So if there's a secondary, that means it has spread, which means it is malignant. Anytime it goes from one place to another or from one place to another, from one place, it is malignant. And so they don't need to say cancer or malignancy. You should know off the bat that that's representing malignancy. And in this case, from is primary. I would align it up, find my code, C76.8, which I would find also on page 482 for malignant neoplasm of other specified and ill-defined sites. Now, in this case, that's a very generic description. But because my neoplasm table took me there, it's okay to code that and know with certainty that that is correct since the exact terminology is matching. If this was not exactly matching, I might look further before determining that's the correct code. And that's how you'll look at your neoplasm table. Always pay attention, of course, to additional characters that may be necessary. Now, for our second part of this uh, second half, of today's uh, lecture, we talk about drugs and chemicals table. And so that's this example that I have here above. The drugs and chemical table is really very similar to the neoplasm table. It's found at the end of the alphabetical after your neoplasm table. So it has its own section as well. It's going to be identified in a table format. So I would go in here and I would look past the alphabetical and I would say, okay, Where's my drugs and chemicals? There it is. And I'm going to read it just the same. This goes first by the drug or substance. So you have it in order by name. Sometimes that name may not match exactly, and that's okay. Um, one resource you can use is the pdr.net. And this is something you'll learn about. Uh, you've probably learned in other classes. You will continue to learn about this. This is a website I highly recommend all coders should have. Um, Put it in your computer somewhere, save it, memorize it. You will use this uh, to look up any time you talk about a drug to see what kind of drug it is. So in this case, our first one in our book on page 77 is for acetamorphine, which is heroin. And our characters are poisoning accidental, poisoning intentional, poisoning by assault, undetermined poisoning, adverse effect and underdosing. Let's talk about that for a second. Poisoning accidental is any time that a patient uh, does not intend to uh, have an overdose of a drug, but they did. 
um, and they were not supposed to be taking it necessarily. So it's not something that was a, an adverse effect or maybe they took too much of it. Okay, so they weren't supposed to take that much of it or they weren't supposed to take it at all really. And so they, they overdosed. Self-harm is they're trying to harm themselves, such as suicide. Assault, just as it sounds, somebody's trying to harm them, so somebody gave it to them and they weren't wanting it. Uh, it's undetermined. This may happen if a patient comes in and they've overdosed on something and they're unconscious. Um, maybe they passed away or maybe they didn't give us a, in, any information. They may say they, for, they don't remember. Um, in that case, poisoning would be un, undetermined. We don't know how they got poisoned, just that they were. And then our last two are adverse effect and underdosing. And these won't always have a code. In fact, the example that I have on the board, none of these had a code. So I'll take that out of our example here. And you can look at the table again on page 77 of your textbook to see that. Okay. And so for these ones, they had just simply a line. The reason for that is because you're not going to have an adverse effect or underdosing on a drug that is not typically taken. So uh, acetone oils, we shouldn't be taking that. Uh, morph uh, acetone morphine, heroin, we shouldn't be taking that. So it, they're not going to have it as a prescription. They're taking it and they're overdosing. Okay, examples where an adverse effect would apply is if we gave them a medication and they immediately had a reaction, perhaps they were allergic. Uh, examples of underdosing, uh, especially with diabetic patients, maybe they didn't take their insulin or a patient who was forgetful, uh, forgot to take their blood pressure medication, those would be underdosing. And so there's uh, all kinds of different scenarios where we're going to come here. Now in this table, it's gonna read just the same as our neoplasm table did. We're gonna find the drug and we're going to determine from the documentation what type of, um, what type of condition this was. Why were they uh, being seen for this drug use? And in this case, this is not for drug use in terms of trying to get someone to stop using drugs. This is because there was a problem. So they overdosed or they underdosed. This is the only time you'll be in here. You'll find the drug. Let's say that they uh, overdosed on heroin by accident. And we'll say it happened this morning. Um, accidental. They weren't trying to, they just happened to overdose. Okay, then we're going to determine that's poisoning accidental, acetamorphine, which we'll find from the pdr.net, and we'll look at that code. Now, you'll notice this code has an X in it. And if you remember from last week's discussion, when we looked at conventions, one of the things we looked at was what is a placeholder? And a placeholder is always denoted by an X. And basically it means that there's something in the code that needs to be described, such as a seventh or sixth character, but not everything that builds up to that is there. So in this case, a fifth digit character, uh, which is where the X is sitting, would not apply to a drug overdose because that typically denotes uh, location and there's not really a location for that. So that X is always going to be listed in that category. And when we look at code T40.1X1, we'll notice there's no other .1X or 1B, it's just 1X, okay? So we don't have to compare that fifth digit. In T40.1X1, which is the code that is recommended, it does specify poisoning by heroin, accidental or un unintentional. And there's a notation for a seventh character. Okay, so just like we talked about earlier, anytime the, when you're looking in the tabular, it'll say a seventh digit character and it'll give uh, examples at the beginning of the code. So the category is seven, uh, I'm sorry, T40. You'll find under T40 the details for the seventh character. Sometimes you may have to go further back, and we'll talk about that when you actually get into ICD-10 CM coding uh, more in that class because that gets into some of the nitty gritty. Um, just know that when you look up the code, always look first in the table, then the alpha, uh, sorry, then the tabular, and then look for any additional notations. So in this case, we would say T40.1X, that's our placeholder, 
and then our last digit. So we said it was today, and if we looked at the seventh character options, that's for initial. So anytime we talk about initial, subsequent, sequela, uh, we're looking at those seventh digit characters. That's all for today. Make sure that you take a look at all of the activities and assignments that are assigned this week, and we'll see you next week for our last section of ICD-10-CM in putting the code together, where we'll be practicing more with how to build the code. Have, have fun, and we'll talk to you later.